So as you guys know, I'm actually a crazy cat lady. Just an update, I'm actually getting a foster cat on Thursday. How do you feel about that, Sora? Hmm? How do you feel about that? He's not so hot about it. We don't know what the cat is, but we will see on Thursday. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how to break into the career technology consulting. If you haven't seen the video already, I actually create a video on why you should be a technology consultant over here. So if you go over there, you can see exactly the pros and cons, what skills are needed, and exactly why you should go into technology consulting. Just keep in mind that this video is on specifically education and experience to become a technology consultant. We have a specific video coming out on the skills and certifications you need, so make sure to keep an eye out on that. This will be your go-to video on if you're interested in technology consulting, how you can actually get into technology consulting and what is needed. want to get into is what are the ways to break into it and then I'm gonna break down more into how are actually gonna be the way you connect so first we're gonna dive into education so my channel mostly focuses on college students and people in their 20s so maybe this is actually the part that really matters the most in terms of like what you study do you need a master's degree like all those kind of things so I'm gonna dive right into it and I would actually say that it's actually really ideal to have both business and tech and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have either or or both in terms of like your majors or anything like that it could be something as simple as maybe like an extracurricular you did so that doesn't necessarily count as education but it does fall under the realm of what you can do in college to increase your chances so first thing is like i just want to say that i came in actually as a business major i concentrated in finance management information systems and strategy and actually the reason why they hired me or the reason why they picked my resume was actually because i had both business and tech my MIS, which is basically like a business version of tech of like either engineering or computer science, it's not necessarily like coding at all, was actually what really attracted them, but also knowing that the business experience and on my resume I actually had both business and tech experience. You have the capability to learn technology, to, to be in the technology industry, to also be a consultant, but you also have the capability to understand the client's business because if you don't understand it, you can't be a good consultant and in general, then you're basically screwed because you can do your work well, but if you can't understand your client and understand their needs or even try to build the whole process and like design the whole process, it could be very difficult for you. But again, there's also many different types of technology consultants out there. There could be those that are particularly technical consultants and those are the ones that like program and all that stuff. I am actually a functional consultant, so it's more on the business side, but I still do something techie. So that's actually something really good to note is that a lot of people ask me, can I still do it if I don't major in tech or if I don't have like a major in business, something like that? But you definitely can and that's when you go into the experience and your skills. So through your education, there's like multiple things I wanna note here is that first, you most likely do need a bachelor's degree. So I know this is a little bit confusing because a lot of people are just like, well, you know, you said that technology is all problem solving and everything, you know, in my video. And um, in general, like what does, why do I I need a bachelor's degree because at the end of the day you just need to be able to answer your clients demands but actually the client <laughs> they prefer someone with a bachelor's degree at least on a minimum and then a master's degree will help but in general honestly they don't actually see like oh cool you have a master's degree we're on the project and you're not so the bachelor's degree is pretty important and a lot of consulting companies don't really look at people that don't have bachelor's degrees unless you go through networking and maybe if you do go through other hiring programs so on the question of master's degree there's actually a lot of different ways you can approach this so I know for sure at Accenture we don't necessarily care about the master's degree that much uh, and also this means that we care really if you have the experience if you have the skills if you have the education for it and when I say education like at least a bachelor's degree because that's really when you're trying to bring everything to life with your experience because like if you have knowledge in social studies or basic math honestly not going to really help you but then again there's a lot of things you don't actually use in college that can actually be used in consulting so when it comes to master's degree not necessarily necessary wow <laughs> not really necessary so if you do go for like management or strategy consulting it does look good and it actually is sometimes encouraged but 
specifically in technology consulting, it actually matters more to have the skills and their certifications. So now we talk about experience. And with experience, there's different ways you can go about it, like I mentioned before, either through the client side or another consulting firm. So if you do go, for example, through the client side, maybe you worked in fashion for like two years and you were working on the finance and accounting team. Now you want to go into technology consulting. As I mentioned before, because you have that finance background, you could actually use that to go into more like a finance side of an ERP system or FinTech or even something like that. There's always many different ways you can build in there. So maybe if you came from higher education, you can actually go for the higher education industry vertical. And there's like so many ways you can really pivot through as long as you had a really good experience prior that you can actually utilize for this in your actual role. And then here's actually the part that really matters the most is do you have client facing skills? And this really means that can I talk to you? Can I communicate with you? And can I actually like work with the client really? And communication, like all those kind of skills are really important. If you don't have them, if you've been like, for example, an accountant that just stays in their cubicle and doesn't really have client facing experience, maybe not the best. But if you actually worked at McDonald's and you talk to customer service and you work at the cash register and you talk to customers that technically counts. I actually used my Staples experience when I was a cashier there back in high school and it really did help me a lot because you do learn very similar types of skills that you're supposed to know like for example how to talk to them, how to calm clients down, in this case customers. So all those kind of things you can actually utilize. And then the third one is if you actually don't have any experience either in the work field or maybe in client facing experiences, you can utilize academic and personal projects. So for example, if you are doing a business major or you're even like an education major or sociology major and you want to do something in consulting, you can actually do like maybe pro bono consulting. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically free consulting. And specifically for technology consulting, what you can actually try to do is maybe find a local business and then try to help them out with like how to make their platform look better. Maybe they need to help on e-commerce or maybe they need help on, for example, their website, like all those kind of things. You're working with the client. You're actually working with a real business too. So it's not necessarily like some fake class project that you could also technically do. That also works too. It's mostly focused on skills for that matter. You're also learning on your own. You're like basically doing everything yourself, unless you work with a team. So this is really the kind of skills that we expect because you're technically not going to know everything when you start your job. So you're going to have to learn everything on the go. And this is definitely a skill you can use when you want to bring it into your interviews as well. Like tell me about a time when you learn something by yourself. Tell me when you start something. All those kind of things, you can actually bring this experience to you. And especially Especially during this time in COVID-19, there's not a lot of people that actually have internships or jobs per se. If you really want to make use of your time and also help local businesses because they are struggling at this time too, you can definitely use this to really provide that client facing experience if you did want to actually you make something happen but also do something for free and for fun. This is actually all I have in terms of how to break into technology consulting. As you can see, there's many ways to break in and there's also so many flexibility in terms of like how you want to pivot yourself into the career. But specifically, if you really want to learn more, make sure to join the Facebook group that I created for our technology consulting community. I actually found that so many groups or so many people focused heavily on magic consulting. I actually got a little bit annoyed. I was like, what, what about technology consulting? Well, how come no one talks about it? No one knows about this and this is why I have this channel to talk to you about technology consulting because no one knows. I even had students come to me like, oh, how about case interviews? Like you talk about the tech case interview. How do I approach it? There's nothing on there. There's like all about these management consulting or strategy consulting case interviews. But I created this Facebook group so you can join and really be part of the conversation on like what you need to be, what you need to do, what are the fields out there? Because like right now I'm focusing on working financial software implementations. There could be so many things out there like a UX research or maybe even in digital marketing that technically counts as technology consulting consulting. There's so many things out there that you may be interested in. There's like so many things out there. Just make sure you do your research on what you want to do. Basically any professional service out there in technology is what technology consulting is. That's why there's so many people out there that like you ask what their job is or like what do they do on a day to day and it always says it depends and this is why you should be watching my video here on how I break down what is exactly technology consulting on a, at least a high level and try to really make sure that you understand the pros and cons before you getting into it. So make sure to join the Facebook group. It's actually in the description down below. Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I focus on professional and personal development, technology consulting career, and money. So if you want more technology consulting resources, make sure to subscribe. 
I'm getting a foster cat on Thursday and I'm actually really excited. Like I've been waiting literally three months for this. Like I signed up for the wait list and there's just so many people. Like this is a really good problem to have, honestly. So many New Yorkers actually were rushing to foster cats because of the whole COVID-19 situation. They weren't exactly sure of like all the resources and volunteers that they had in hand. So a lot of people volunteered. I was one of those volunteers and finally I'm on the list. To receive a cat so I'm going in on Thursday to pick up a cat for a foster and then you'll see that in my videos so I want to utilize my platform here on YouTube to kind of like showcase the cats a little bit more so that way that if you are interested in adopting a cat that you can adopt this cat if you're in New York City at least unless you're willing to drive up here or whatever but um, I will be showcasing the cats here so that way you can kind of learn about the cats uh, getting a foster cat from best friends animal society if you guys heard about that they have a shelter in Soho so I'll be focusing on cats in that area so if you're in the New York City area and you are interested in one of the cats that I'm showing not my cats my cats are not for adoption but if you're interested in any of the cats that I'm going to be showing in terms of like what is available for adoption so make sure to reach out to me because I always actually do have the opportunity to tell the shelter that someone is interested and not just from the shelter and in general so without a further ado I have to show my cats like they're so cute right now oh my god they've been sleeping there look how cute Hang on. No, 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 no. She's about to, she was about to lick. We got Sora over here. Again, these are not for adoption. These are my cats, not for adoption. Hi, Sora. Make that bank for your kitties. Yeah. 